So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today, I want to go over a very, very, very important hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu We all know one of the ways to save yourself from the jad is to read Surah Kahf every Friday. That's a whole different subject, but what you will know by the end of this discussion, inshallah, I'll make it quick, is something that if you know, you will be able to deal with the situation when the jal comes, and you will be able, to, you will be better prepared uh, as an individual to be able to resist the temptations of the jal. And if you don't do this, and if you don't know this, you may have no choice but to give in to the temptation of the jal. So, Hudayfa uh, radiallahu anh, is a very famous companion of the Prophet so I'm not going to go into his life because I want to make this quick. The Prophet, he, he says, Hudayfa says, this is in Sahih Bukhari Kitab al-Fitr, okay? He says, كَانَ النَّاسُ يَسْأَلُونَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ عَنِ الْخَيْرِ وَكُنْتُ أَسْأَلُهُ عَنِ الشَّعْرِ مَخَافَةِ أَنْ يُدْرِكَنِي the people used to ask the Prophet of the good things. And I used to ask him about the evil things, the bad things that would happen. From the fear that it would overtake me. So he said, So I said to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah. We were in Jahiliya. Washar and evil. So Allah came to us with this good that came to you, that Allah brought with you. Sorry. Now with this good that you have brought, this peace, this justice, this Medina, Arabia, this Islam, the, the truth of Islam, is there any evil after this? Qala, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Na'am, fihi dakhan, but it will be tainted. And what is the Prophet referring to here is the other hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that after the khilafa ala min hajj al Islam will change into mulkan, then will change into kingships. Islam became from khilafah to kingship, so it will be tainted. He said, what will be its taint? How will it be tainted? There will be people who will call to something other than my guidance. There, but it will have some good and it will have some things you recognize and some things you don't recognize as part of Islam. So this is the period of the kingship. When you put those two hadiths of Noman ibn Bashir, with this hadith it becomes very clear. Now after that tainted Islam, will there be then some evil? He said, Naam, yes. Now remember the hadith of Jibreel where the Prophet said, They will compete in big buildings. Who? The Khufra al Ura, those people who were naked and Bedouins and had destitute, they will start competing. Those people. There will be people calling on the doors of the hellfire. Man ajabahum il. Whoever answers to their call, uh, uh, he enters into it. فَقُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ He said, O Messenger of Allah, سِفْهُمْ لَنَا can you describe their characteristics? What are their qualities? Qala, the Prophet said, they will be from our skin. And they will talk with our tongue, meaning Arabic. Because the fitna, the shawr, will be at its most extreme in the Arab world. The movement of from 
from Bedouin to modernity has not, this shift from being Bedouins to the modern times has not happened with any, in any place with so much extreme as it has happened in Arabia, not in Africa, not in Asia, you know, you still find uh, poor people in India, you still find poor people in Africa, but the, the level of change that's happened and the level of uh, the enticement of this zinat uh, al-hayat al-dunya that's happened in the Arab world, that is unprecedented in history. I'm sorry, this thing, this text keeps getting smaller on me. Man ajabahum ilayha, whoever answers them about it, Qadafuhu fiha, he will enter into it. Sifhum lana, he said, O Prophet of Allah, describe them to us. Hum min jildatuna, they are from our skin. Wa tukallimuna bi ansinatina, and they talk, they are talking in the Arabic language. Fa kultu ma ta'amuruni in adrakni thalik. What, O Prophet of Allah, do you tell me to do if this situation comes upon me? The Prophet Iltazim Jama' al Muslimin wa Imamuhu be with the Jama' of the Muslims and their Imam. Now, what does that mean? Very important. Fakultu illam yakun Jama' wa la Imam. And he said, If there is no Jama' or Imam, then what do you want me to do? Fa'tazil tilka al firq. Now, this, leave all of these groups. Then leave all the groups. Because if there's no Jama'ah, now what Jama'ah al-Muslimin here, he means here, and I have understood this after my experiences with Dr. Isra Ahmed and Sheikh Imran Hussein. And that is, that when you combine the ideas of the two, the way I will interpret this is that you have to learn, and very, 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 very important, and Imam, Sheikh Imran Hussein talks about this, and when he talks about the Muslim village project, right? You have to learn you have to learn how to live off the grid. You have to learn how to live off the grid. You have to learn that when this economy falls, how are you going to live off the grid? How are you going to have your own water? How are you going to have your own family? How are you going to have your own food? You have to make that change back to low technology life, back in the Bedouin urban uh, uh, farming style. If you are not ready for that, you will have no choice but to compromise. Okay? And so, this is what it's iltazim jama' al muslim because the Muslims, what will they do? The Muslims will not want to be part of this new system that comes after the, the this house of cards of this uh, paper money falls. When this paper money falls, when this house of card falls, the new system that will come in its place will be most oppressive towards Islam and will be most um, unacceptable in the eyes of the Muslims because of the type of things that it will demand in terms of riba, interest. Muslims will have no, no, no choice but to be in that system and to take interest, just as it is now, but even worse. And so Muslims will be asked to live in conditions that is unacceptable to them. So unless they're willing to live off the grid and learn how to live off the grid and be off the grid, which is what Ashab al-Kahf did. Ashab al-Kahf went off the grid. They went off the main city life. Right? And then you find uh, the second man in the garden. Right? Then even if then there will be people even deceived at that time. They think that, oh, because I got a big farmland, it means nothing will happen. I can live off the grid, but nothing will happen to me. No, I can still be caught. And so, اِتَّزِمْ جَمَعَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَإِمَامُهُمْ Be with the Jama'a al-Muslimin. Be with those Muslims, the Muslim village project of Shaykh Imran Hussein, but interpreted in a different way that in this time period, until Muslims can be strong enough to re-establish their deen, they should be um, urgently, urgently, urgently working towards finding ways to live off the grid. Whether you're in Pakistan, because Pakistan will have... The economy falls, everyone will be killing each other. Right? When the economy falls, it doesn't matter if you're in Chicago or you're in Lahore. 
Everyone is going to act as they act. Unless you don't have your own sustainable way of surviving, thousands and even maybe millions of billions of people will die when this happens. So, Iltazim bil Jama'a wa Imamun qala He said, فَقُلْتُ فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُمْ جَمَاعَةٌ وَلَا إِمَامٌ What would I do if there's no jama'ah or imam? Qala, the Prophet said, صلى الله عليه وسلم, فَاعْتَزِنْ تِلْكَ الْفِرْقِ Then leave all of these. Leave the, if there's no imam, there's no, no one that will be able to, no one in that area that has the knowledge and the, because you can't do this individually. It's a collective job to create sustainable systems outside the grid where you can survive without electricity, whether you, you, know, you do it through agriculture and maybe use some technology of solar, whatever it is, right? Different Muslims will come out with different uh, uh, answers. The Prophet says, All of them. If you even have to bite from the roots of the tree, if you have to bite from the roots of the tree, where will you be when this happens? Outside the city, outside the system, outside the grid. Until death comes upon you and you are upon that. When this system collapses, and if you don't have a system to have your milk, to have your water, to have your security, like Ashab al Gaf had the dogs protecting them at that time. You may have no choice but to use dogs at that time. It may become mandatory because of the situation to use dogs, even if you don't like it. To protect, to have them outside your cave, outside your house, outside your agricultural land to protect you. The most, ex most valuable things at that time amongst them will be water, will be gold and silver, and maybe bullets, <laughs> very expensive metal, and guns, security. If you don't know, if you, if Muslims will not be able to come together to be able to be living sustainably outside the grid and live in that poverty, and they will be looking at the other Muslims who are enjoy, who apparently may be looking like they're enjoying their life, living inside the grid, inside the system. And so this is what this hadith is pointing to when you take the entire context. I will give a dars on this verse of the Quran that talks about this. And I will point to this uh, hadith again when I talk about that. Because it'll be when you put things together, this becomes pretty clear. You need to create Muslim sustainability outside the grid where we can have our own survival uh, areas before the collapse of this current paper money system and the, the unsustainability of the way the world is right now. It, it's just... People just don't understand that how absolute correct the Prophet was, Sallallahu Alaihi This whole system, this whole system is a house of cards that is really just about to just... It could be, I'm not saying it'll be today, it could be 20 years, it could be 10 years, it could be 5 years, it could be 30 years, 40 years, but it's inevitable. When, we don't know, but it's inevitable that the system is going to collapse like a house of cards because it's built upon paper money. It's built upon debt. You can't just sustain debt and you cannot just sustain taking things out of the ground forever. Everything will get more and more expensive. Oil will get more expensive. You cannot sustain this. It's not sustainable to have more and more and more and more oil coming out, more and more fresh water being used, more and more resources of the world being used. The eye about this is very interesting. So inshallah, I hope you liked my video. Please write comments. I want to get this message out to the Muslims. Please help me. So like my video, subscribe to my video, leave some comments, and ask me any questions. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah khairan.